Hello and uh, welcome to this another week of our online lectures on uh, multimedia and you know this week uh, we are supposed to uh, start with you know the color signs or color models that we use in image and video so um, uh, let's start with so it is you know very simple the basic kind of working principle or, or the physics of this all about you know electromagnetic radiation and our human eye so how electromagnetic radiation you know behaves when it interacts with our you know the human eye constructions or how our human human eye responds with electromagnetic radiations that's it all about and different colors that we perceive that basically coming you know from the radiation of different wavelength right so this radiation of different wavelengths and um, if you remember that what is wavelength uh, there is a relationship between uh, frequency and wavelength frequency is basically 2 pi divided by wavelength so and intensity of each wavelength is specified by a certain amplitude right so that means when you see a light coming from an object or reflected from an object the intensity of that reflected light or let's light that coming from you know a certain source whatever it is uh, so the intensity depends on its wavelength at at what wavelength what is the amplitude and an other wavelength might be you know the different amplitude and the light we see that is we say the visible light this is basically the visible electromagnetic radiation and this is somehow you know 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer right okay now if we you know uh, visually see this so in front of us that's the spectrum so in this spectrum you see the entire you know um, definitely the electromagnetic spectrum here so uh, it, this upper scale is saying that as you go to the right side it basically shows the frequency so the frequency increases as you go to the right side and here the lower scale the blue scale this is basically wavelength scale in the wavelength you know the increases as you go to the left direction so this means the frequency and wavelength basically they have a reciprocal relationship if frequency increases wavelength decreases or the vice versa that wavelength decreases the frequency increases so the visible light that we see is basically you know somewhere around you know uh, 400 nanometer to 700 nanometers so as you can see the 400 nanometers is basically this area so where this you know violet colors you know uh, comes in and around the 700 nanometer this is basically represents some sort of you know red version of the light so and you know that from you know visible to you know red this is the band of light that we you know visually perceive by our human eyes and this is exactly on the scale it looks like you know in these positions so and you see this is basically a color band or color spectrum and definitely below that so that means you know around this uh, you know below 700 or higher than 700 nanometers ranges that basically you know the am radio fm radio you know microwave you know that kind of you know things that we, we see right higher or lower basically you know low maybe lower range you can you can see that which one okay that means the relationship is if frequency increases wavelength decreases so uh, this is the relationship and uh, so anyway we are interested you know somewhere around this 400 to 700 nanometers in these lectures so uh, the color that we usually see that is coming from an object reflected from or from a source uh, it's not just you know a single wavelength that, that we see rather it's basically a combinations of many wavelengths together so uh, if we if we see the emission amplitude for example you know let's say at 400 nanometers the amplitude is somewhere let's say here definitely it's a relative you know amplitude versus wavelength you know graph and it depends on person to person and the light that you perceive is definitely different from me but somehow let's forget about that it's a you know some sort of you know uh, you know wavelength intensity profile and and you see that for example at, as as you go there you know rightward 
the intensity or amplitude basically you know decreases emission amplitude there or radiation amplitude or radiation strength whatever we say now around the red you know the amplitude or emission is very basically very less you know if we think about intensity profile right so this is a typical intensity profile now what we mean let's say at a we are seeing a very particular you know uh, light you know coming or very particular color coming from a particular object's surface or something or how an object looks like so that might be you know combination of this wavelength at this wavelength or maybe at this wavelength or maybe at this wavelength and and this wavelength let's say uh, i indicated here four wavelength right so maybe some amplitude of at this wavelength and the, this amplitude of at this wavelength and this amplitude at this wavelength and this amplitude at this wavelength right or partial amplitude of this amplitude at this particular wavelength if we sum up together then the perception or light that will be coming maybe that's a, a a typical light that we see from somewhere but in reality it might be even more right for example see if you, you, you generally know that or even we inf informed you know we learn in the first you know two lectures that if we you know mix you know red green blue that kind of fundamental colors then any colors we can reproduce right so that is basically coming from here so anyway this profile you know that we can that we see in front of us sometimes we say this is basically as a spectrum or more about you know more appropriately you know visible spectrum or sometimes we say you know a spectral power distribution why spectral because this you know range that's 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer this basically is spectrum or frequency spectrum and you know this you know y-axis we are saying this is amplitude if we take the square of the amplitude it becomes the power so that's why we say uh, you know spectral power distribution so now you know this you know color you know that we, we normally know that you know you know that you know that i just said the de facto representation of color you know when we, when we see the computer screen or display screen that's basically rgb and that is basically additive color. Additive color means if you add up the R, green, and blue uh, in, in certain amount or certain proportion, you come up with a, some specific color. There are definitely, you know, there are subtractive colors also. The subtractive color we say, you know, cyan, magenta, and yellow color. And this K basically means nothing. It's basically the absence, you know, or, or sometimes we say black. So this is sometimes we say subtractive color. So that means there is, let's say, a box, you know, a mix of, you know, cyan or, or you know, magenta and Y. If you take out some color, so that's, you know, that's somehow, you know, we say the subtractive color. And things that we can simulate in real life that, let's say, we are printing on a white page, right? So that means on a white page, if you just, you know, uh, add something, so that is basically it's subtracting some capacity from the white surface. So we see that, you know color then but anyway we will talk about that just a little later more so why you know you know this is the case that we are saying the three component of color so so either cmy in subtractive model or let's say rgb this is three three component so if you come up with the three component for example you know this red green and blue if you you know mix up these things in a right you know a proportion you come up with any color or if you give it the proper amount, the equal amount, then you come up with a white color. Or you know, if you have a white color, then you take out magenta, you take out cyan, and take out yellow on a certain proportion, then you come up with a very different color. So in either way, three components are there. Why? The reason is, you know, this you know spectrum, uh, this spectral power distribution, or this you know visible spectrum, basically can be constructed you know mathematically somehow mathematically not perfectly but somehow mathematically represented as weighted sum of three nonlinear functions now each nonlinear function basically represents one color function okay if you have you know, one color function second color function third color function and those color functions are basically nonlinear and then if you just you know uh, do the weighted sum of these nonlinear functions then we can you know uh, see that so that means that three nonlinear functions we say you know the basis functions uh, i don't know if you are familiar with the basis function or not but for this time being we don't need to know about that 
Now, what we can say, what is the source and origin of that, you know, weighted sum mechanisms? Or we are saying this basis function mechanisms. What is the source of that? Or why these three things comes in? So to understand that, you know, we have to study or at least know a little bit about, you know, human eye and its mechanism. So definitely we will not study the biology uh, mechanism in details, but a little bit in a computational aspect, okay? So uh, let's, uh, we study on that human eye. Okay, so before that, uh, let me turn off my, you know, face. So this is, you know, a human eye structure and you are very much familiar with these sorts of structures and, and drawing from your middle school and in high school stuff. So, uh, so you see this one is the retina of the eye, right? So this entire, you know, from here to here, this periphery. So, and this retina is very important in eye and it uh, contains, you know, various kinds of biological elements. Now, the very two, you know, important elements for our understanding is, you know, cone and rod receptors in the retina. Now, cone and rods, let's say this rod is, is basically, you know, kind of bar-shaped or rod-shaped, you know, receptors is somehow, you know, this one, this one we say this is the rod receptors. And that placed on the retina, usually rods, you know, place, you know, in this, you know, from here and then, you know, here, in this area, basically, there are lots of, you know, you know, rods, there are lots of maybe, maybe several millions, you know, several millions of rods are placed onto this retina. And uh, within this rod, if you just, you know, a little bit, you will not understand the very details. So, uh, this within this inside this you know rods you know there are this kind of you know kind of disc you know these sorts of you know optical disc this contains or uh, basically contains uh, different you know kinds of proteins and those proteins are basically sensitive to the light okay and when the light you know falls on this that means electromagnetic wave falls on these sorts of you know you know rods receptors then you know some sort of you know chemical potentials build up and this potentials is basically you know you know uh, becomes the output of these rods so and that's basically transmits you know to other cell and then somewhere or some other or organ you know by this some sort of you know synaptic body okay okay now similarly you know similarly structures of cone also has you know this is we say cone and inside the cone also there are some optical you know kind of disc that's also contain some sort of you know proteins and uh, interestingly we can see that you know this there are you know three different types of cones we can see there are you know rods mostly you know uniform or similar but cones are you know there are three different types of cones okay now this you know different types of cones that we see these cones are you know primarily responsible for color perceptions and these rods are responsible for you know luminance perception now what is luminance perception luminance perception is that brightness information that when you look at something or let's say some object or some pictures that how how much intensity it has that it has a low intensity or high intensity you know so that sorts of perception or black and white information, we say that sort of information is luminous information or luminous perception. And the color information that we say chromaticity, this color information is basically coming that uh, what kind of this cone, there are three different types of cone and each one how, you know, behaves and how that's respond to a particular electromagnetic wavelength. So that's what it means. And, you know, these cones primarily, you know, uh, situated you know placed and located you know onto this fovea there is a region you know onto this whole retina that is called fovea so uh, in the fovea of retina this cone is different i mean uh, primarily placed okay now the three different types of cones we usually you know recognize them or we name them as s cones m cones and l cones now s generally means you know short wavelength and M means medium wavelength and L means long wavelength. 
So S type cones, so that is short wavelength, we say S type because those cones are basically response to shorter wavelength. You know, you know the wavelength, the visible spectrum wavelength is you know, from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. And we can see this, you know, S type cones, you know, response to, you know, mostly to this short wavelength. So, and then you have M type cones m type cones generally responds you know more about you know in uh, medium wavelength so that is around 560 nanometer and then you have long wavelength cone that is l type cones that's basically respond to 600 you know 10 nanometers wavelength around okay now if you see a little bit more this is exactly you know looks like this one okay so think about the short wavelength that we are talking about. So this is that short wavelength, you know, this function is look like this one, you see. The function is not definitely linear, but we can see that around maybe 430 or maybe around this range, this short wavelength, so, you know, those sorts of cones, we are saying S cones, right? If you remember that, S cones, okay? S cones respond, you know, like this one. And if you carefully follow, the S cones mostly, you know, respond here at this point around, let's say, 430 nanometer, the most, the peak response is coming here. And then other wavelength around this 430, you know, as you go left side, it becomes, you know, less. And as you go right side, it also, you know, gradually, you know, decreases. And then at certain point, it's flattened. Of course, there are some response, but, you know, it eventually flattened. We, we say that in this area, this is less response. And if you look about, you know, uh, you know, M type cones, that is M cones. So in M cones, so here generally, so this one, you see this and this G, so this one. So it is, you know, somehow, you know, it becomes, you know, around here, this is the peak. And then you also have, you know, as you go right or left, the response is you know, become less and less gradually de de you know, decreases. And also you can see that, you know, the another one that is, you know, long wavelength, that is L type, we say L cones in general. This L cones also maybe somewhere here, right? Around here, this is the peak. And then you have also have this, you know, bell-shaped curve as you go right and as you go left, the response become less and less. So ultimately these S cones, M cones and L cones, they all have, you know, nonlinear function over the entire spectrum, right? Over the entire spectrum, right? Definitely at every places there are a certain amount of, you know, this S and there are certain amount of, you know, for example, let's, let's say particular examples, let's say, think about just at this wavelength. Definitely at this wavelength, there are, you know, you know, certain amount of, you know, this S wavelength and certain amount of medium wavelength, uh, M type response and the certain response coming also from you know, L type cones. So at a very particular wavelength, so the response, you know, coming basically the combinations of all of these three cones. So these response together, you know, provide us some sort of sense of a particular light. So similarly, at this wavelength, you see, there are certain amount of, you know, this uh, S and there are certain amount of, you know, we have this M cones and then certain amount of L cones. So together, we have certain you know, we have some sense of a particular light amount, okay? Now, interestingly, this S, we generally, you know, think about this is corresponds to blue color and M corresponds to green color and this L functions correspond to red color, you know, roughly. And the reason is you can see that, right? Because this one, this S types that we are saying blue, the reason is this wavelength is actually somehow around the blue and this one is somehow the peak is around the green and this one the peak is you know in the red side so that's why we say that if we you know mix this in sorts of you know blue green and red at different amount then we see this is coming some sort of you know any kinds of light is possible now if we if we you know if we are in this you know side that we are mostly taking the red and less green and less blue we, we we would say that we are more towards the red you know lights then 
so so how the total intensity comes you know we understand that this is the you know response you know the, this is the response for blue this is the response for green and this is the red for you know response for you know red cones or we we say l cones then what is the total intensity that total you know brightness information that we have definitely we have some uh, you know intensity coming from the red portion or or l cone and some coming from the m cones response and some coming from the s cone response or we say sensitivity sensitivity for example the sensitivity of you know the s type cones or let's say blue cones is the most here right so in this way now if we add up all this you know at any particular points at any particular points if we add up the sensitive coming from the s cones sensitive coming from the m cones and sensitive coming from the you know red cones and then we, we just sum up all of these three then maybe you know we will get you know this point so this is basically the total you know intensity or we say luminous efficiency or luminous you know response or sensitivity for brightness information or we usually say that this v basically the summation of all of this intensity profile and we say this is the luminous information or we we say sometimes you know this determines the luminous efficiency so you see the luminous efficiency you know the maximum at this point okay so this is you know somehow you know the knowledge of you know uh, of, of how this biological stuff works now it's not any anything's absolute it depends and varies person to person so this kind of response you know on an average we are saying that this is then let's say average if you just do an experiment for 20 people maybe on an average you will be getting you know these sorts of in typical response curves now then what is the you know uh, you know uh, you know standard colors or actually let's understand that what we mean by color is space now color is space means that what are the different ways and ways to organize colors definitely there are certain you know systematic way how we can handle and generate how we can determine color so that's we say color is space okay now that to go that first we need to understand what is the standard color definitely there is no standard color but we standard we set you know somehow you know based on agreement and to set that sort of a standard there is no purely mathematical things it's all about you know how we do you know different kind of color matching experiments now any color matching experiment generally you know consists of you know three different kinds of you know fundamental you know colors or fundamental wavelength for example let's say somehow you have you know a, a red wavelength that is that is you have a source of light let's say you have a source of light this source of light let's say somehow here okay uh, if i if i go here let's say that source of light somehow at a very particular wavelength maybe that generating only at a very particular wavelength of from red and another in let's wavelength maybe somewhere here and another wavelength somehow somehow here this is we say monochromatic light that light that actually emit a single wavelength okay so we roughly say this is a red lamp this is a green lamp and this is a you know blue lamp now you know if we have that kind of you know light and let's say we we start so we expose this light you know onto this you know surface and then here we keep a very particular color object or a particular object for of a particular color and then a observer see from here okay and then you know we try to you know you know adjust these three colors in such a way so that you know the color that produced in this side become exactly equal to this test color when this color matches we say that okay this is the proportion of color you know for this observer to match this color or we say that this is how we have to you know mix up and this is how what is the right proportion to mix up to generate exact color for this observer okay now based on these sorts of experiment you know then we can say okay this is the pattern uh, for example you know some we, we can say that okay if this is our let's say if this is our you know entire spectrum from 400 nanometer to let's say 700 nanometer and we can say that okay you know if we have this kind of you know functions for blue function and maybe we have you know this kind of function for green function 
and maybe you know these kinds of function for you know i don't know maybe i let's say this is red portion okay so this sets up you know nonlinear response or sensitivity for this observer we can determine and then based on that experiment we can say that this is color matching function the color matching function is three colors we have three color function we have and then based on this we can determine we can generate some other colors okay but definitely it's a particular person if you change another observer you know this function will be different then we can you know perform this experiment for you know 20 30 people and then we can make an average of that okay now based on that you know there are you know different kinds of color spaces we can generate the very first you know such experiment was you know organized and conducted by this standard body that we say international commission on illuminations or in brief CIE so CIE and very long back you imagine almost 100 years back you know they performed these sorts of color experiment and this CIE this standard body for color they basically you know come up with different kinds of color recommendations color guidelines standards and you know different sorts of you know white you know papers guideline and based on that you know uh, kinds of guidelines and that you know device we prepare to the electronic devices let's say printer monitors and even various kinds of you know uh, film that we generate that's you know based on you know their works or modified versions of their works okay so anyway so let's first understand you know you know sus you know that why we need uh, different kinds of color spaces you know we we understand that we have different kind of color spaces for example the very fast we can you know think about this cie xyz we'll you know shortly see what is that then xyy rgb cmyk ssv lab uvw yuv and what not many kinds of color spaces why we need that many kind of color spaces well the reason is very simple some color spaces are good for display you know and some color are good for editing purposes some color are good for computational processing for example image processing and some colors are good for compression stuff right because you know that image video uh, that's always you know comes with color perception color information now uh, but that is very multimedia data is very intense very it's basically it takes a lot of stories we need to compress and then there is you know situation if you go for one color space and if you go to the other color space maybe one color space is more compression efficient than other color space okay and also sometimes you know there are some features of a particular color space uh, that we we might be interested in and sometimes those features are contradictory for example you know feature might be that one color space may be additive color model and this another color you know subtractive color model and i told you something on that we will see these things little more little later then also you know i told you that you know colors comes with you know uh, color information one is color perception and another is brightness you know perception right brightness now this brightness we say this brightness uh, is basically luminance and this color we say chromaticity or chrominance now you know there are situations that where you can basically mix this uh, both brightness information and color information and also you can separate mathematically or in some in by some mechanism so how we can separate between this brightness and this color information or luminance information and chrominance information uh, so that's also a matter so we need to see that kind of feature the where it is easier or difficult also when you have a color you know space that how one color is you know different from other color that is also a matter if the difference is you know high that means we can say that we can perfectly you know differentiate between these two colors and we will see some of these things you know very shortly okay now let's start with you know x y z color space okay we will study different kind of color space the very first is x y z color space and this x y z color space basically you know uh, the one of the first things that came from you know this cie color you know uh, matching experiments and that's done in 1931 as i told you so 
so what it says i told you that you know they somehow came up with some you know three nonlinear functions right and that is basically that how uh, you know in you know for a particular observer how he sees or how his you know retinas that's rods and cones respond when the electromagnetic radiation exposed on the eye or retina for example let's say this electromagnetic radiation or emission profile when it is exposed to a particular person how his retina behaves so perhaps you know his retina behaves like this one okay let's say one is like this another is like that and another is like this there are three different sensitivities we can say the one you know sensitivity is let's say you know this one that is x bar x you know bar lambda and another y lambda because it is a function of wavelength and another is let's say y bar lambda and another is let's say you know small z bar lambda okay this is small x small y and small z so this is that and roughly it looks like let's say this one uh, this one right this is the x and this is y and this is the z okay now a very interesting thing is this is basically the response this is basically the response so uh, I'm, I'm just opening this one okay so this is basically the response as you as you can see this is basically the response of our cones and rods that's kind of things okay i'm just a little bit okay and this is the emission profile okay this is the emission profile or you know a spectrum profile that we know about and definitely that's you see from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer and this is response is also 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer okay now think about a very particular function let's say we i don't know maybe maybe let's say we think about the z function okay we, we, we first think about the z function now see this is basically response of a particular cones now you take a very particular wavelength let's say this wavelength at this wavelength what is the you know what is the sensitivity this is the sensitivity okay and and what is what is the you know our you know the electromagnetic radiation profile at this place maybe i'm talking about maybe maybe at least this place okay maybe maybe at this place so this is that this point exactly this is the amount this is the this is the amount that we are seeing the radiation intensity or radiation amplitude and let's say at this point let's say at the same point our response of this particular cone is this one okay now at this wavelength at this wavelength if you just you know multiply these two if you just multiply these two and then you see the another you know wavelength let's say at this wavelength at this wave at this wavelength and at this wavelength this is the response you know our you know our response and and let's say this is the profile of electromagnetic radiation intensity okay so in this way if you just go and if you just you know take all of this you know one by one at each wavelength one by one and then what you do is basically you take this one you take this one and you multiply with this one okay you multiply this one and this one and then you multiply this one and this one and you again multiply with this one and if you do for entire spectrum so that means that means what what i'm talking is basically so if this one if this one is basically e lambda this is emission and this function is let's say z bar lambda so what i'm doing is let's say we multiply e lambda with z bar lambda okay and then you integrate integrate for this whole you know lambda okay for this whole lambda for entire frequency then what you get this is exactly if you just multiply this spectrum profile with this particular you know this function then then what is this this is basically the energy energy that actually you know uh, coming from this you know particular cone sensitivity or we can say the total stimulation that it receives from this entire visible spectrum you know can be you know this value or z value okay so let's we go back here so what i'm saying is so when we just take let's say you know this function let's say x function you know this one function this is you know we can say this is some sort of response function from a particular you know cones okay maybe maybe red cone or something okay and then you just multiply with this you know electromagnetic spectrum and then you just you know integrate for this whole lambda 
then what you get you basically come up with you know the energy you know, total stimulus stimulation total stimulation that entire cones is receiving you know for this particular type of cone receiving you know due to this electromagnetic wave spectrum so similarly if you just you know take the spectrum and multiply with this you know y function and then you just integrate over the whole lambda then you are getting that what is the total stimulus stimulation coming you know due to this response of our you know due to the exposing of this electromagnetic radiation onto this particular cone type at the same way we now have z values so that is e lambda and then is this is the z per lambda and then you know just you integrate over entire spectrum and then you come up with one values this is called this is the total stimulation that this you know z type cones receives due to the exposing of this electromagnetic radiation okay so these values we say x y z values and interestingly this y value we can see that this y that is usually coming from this curve this is basically the bright somehow represent the brightness information or we say luminance information okay and the other you know values we are saying x values and z values these two values we are saying this is basically determines color information color perceptions or we say chrominance information so ultimately you know we have now three values these three values we say you know tri stimulus values tri stimulus values x y z and look we are we are writing you know somehow you know this big letter okay so this big letter x y and z values that's we say tri stimulus values and these three values together determines color information as well as brightness information so definitely this together you know constitutes this x y z color space okay x y z color space now think about like this let's say this is our x and let's say this is our z and this is basically on a two-dimensional plane and let's say this is our this you know vertical line this is our capital y so that means you just you know go any points on this plane in x and z and at this plane you just go the vertical axis that's your luminous information or brightness information so this three-dimensional space then creates you know a color space so that means in this three-dimensional it creates a volume of something so at any point inside this volume in a three-dimensional space basically you know represents a color a particular color okay so and at, at at every point at every point maybe maybe at every point in this you know volume you know represent a particular color maybe at some point it is white at some point it is you know perfectly red at some point it is somewhere in between so this is a think about a three-dimensional space and that represent a color and this exactly you know can be represented and identified by this you know xyz tri stimulus values okay so so most of this color space or all of this color space basically you know uh, comes from this xyz stuffs or a modified version of these things okay so uh, but you know this xyz that we you know just explain is somehow is a three dimensional and it's a little bit hard and and sometimes it's inconvenience to to consider imagine draw or or, or something so that's why you know uh, a very fast things the modified color space that we can think of is <coughs> now you know <coughs> xy you know y space okay so this is also uh, basically came uh, from this the same standard they saw they understood that you know handling xyz that is you know capital xyz is little bit difficult so rather in a more convenient way to come up with you know small xy large y space now what is that so that means if you if you look at color carefully xyz and xyy in both of this color space this y is common so this is the same y so that means this xyy in color space so this luminous information or y information is basically the same the difference is, is here we have you know 
x and z but here we have you know x and y now we see that how we define the x and y okay the small x we can define you know something like that let's say we take the tri stimulus values x and if we just you know divide by this you know total stimulus values okay that is x divided by x uh, sorry small x divide equal capital x divided by capital x plus capital y plus capital z and y can be defined as this one you just take y and then again you just normalized by this one okay and then you can actually come up with another value which is z and that is that can be also defined the same way that is x plus y plus z definitely you know we don't need these things right now but we will understand this one we draw not we just right now needed this one but before we go you know there is an, an interesting relationship if you just take you know small x small y small z and then you just you know you know just replace the what is the value of x with this one and the value of y with this one and the value of z with the, this one and if you just you know do the algebraic manipulation definitely you know you will see this is coming x plus y plus z and because you know this downside is all the same x plus y plus z so you end up with basically one okay so that means you know let's say you know we we, we found a relationship that z basically one minus x minus y just you, you just take if x plus y plus z equal one that's coming from if you just sum up all of these three then you come up with this and if you take you know what is the values of z then definitely 1 minus x minus y okay now what is the physical significance of this will be coming soon and that is the starting point of our understanding on color space but then you know we, we, we understand that if we have x y z information then from there how we can come up with x y y information right so because it is very simple that to get this x we'll just follow this one and to get you know this z will follow you know you know th this equation okay then uh, how we uh, go to the reverse so that means you know from x y y how we have you know x y z okay so and this is also very simple so you know this y is the same so we don't need to find out this y so because y you already have so how we get the x values so x values is if you if you can if you can you know manipulate this equation somehow then you will be coming up with this kind of you know things that you have y then you just divide it by y and then just you have the xy so you see you know if you have this xy on y so just you do y divided by y that means this is cap y the big y divided by small y and then multiplied by small x so and then the z is the similarly if you just divided the big y with the small y and that's just you know multiplied you know with this one so this is basically the you know small z okay so uh it is a sample simple right you, you now you got the x and z and so from this one this you know small x y y space to you can come up with the big x y z space okay we understand that one so now let's explain what we mean by you know x y you know y space okay so this space is basically you know this is luminous information or brightness information this one but these two this x and y basically determines the color space the main color space okay so this one is basically your color or chromaticity this determines the colors or this determines the chromaticity now if you just you know plot let's say x in this axis and y in this axis then the entire color that you can generate is basically this one this is called you know chromaticity diagram okay now this chromaticity diagram what it says that let's say you just you know take you know any points on this you know chromaticity diagram let's say any points for example let's say this point okay let's say this point now at this point definitely you have certain x let's say maybe you know this is small x this small x1 and if you go and definitely this is your y1 so so that means you know you you now have you know let's say at a very particular point you have a small this x1 and this is you have the y1 
right? So that point that we are talking about, maybe this point. So this, you know, x1 and y1 point basically tells you that which colors, you know, represented by these combinations of x and y1. So similarly, any points on this diagram basically represented by a pair of, you know, x values, okay? This x values, y values. So what is these values? You see that this x, x basically, you know, it starts from 0 and end up maybe around 1. Let's say this, this scale is basically, you know, 0 to 1. Similar, this scale is also from 0 to 1. So the values, both x and y, basically lies, you know, from 0 to 1 in this range, okay? And any point or any points on this, let's say, so that's perfectly can be, you know, determined by, you know, x and y. Or if you have the values of x and y, any particular, you know, point, if you, if you, if you mention this x and y value, let's say any point, maybe any desired point, let's say xd and let's say any, you know, yd. So maybe this xd and yd, I don't know where is this one. Maybe, maybe let's say this one, this is xd and yd, okay? So definitely this means this is, let's say xd and this is let's say yd so you can say oh so this point basically represent this color okay now let's say we talk more about this chromaticity diagram so to say this you know i have this in a small video for you so i i believe that you will you know watch this small youtube video but here i need to explain something so let's we start this one so if you, if you follow that there is some number here so so the, there is some number here on this you know solid line you know this solid line this solid line represent you know the single color light or single you know frequency light or single wavelength light for example you know the, this one is basically 590 nanometer similar this one is 530 nanometer this one is 520 nanometer and how this color looks like that if you just got a reflections, you know, if you if you have a reflection, you know, maybe around from here, so this is 590 nanometers, and it's somehow, you know, maybe not red, it's somehow orange or something. And if you see that, you know, around this one, this around 520 nanometers, you know, chromatic length, chromatic wavelength, chromatic light, monochrome light, so this looks like a green, okay? So that means as you move toward this solid line, you basically generate the monochrome or monochromatic light so that means the light source is is basically single wavelength and that is you know that wavelength is basically see around this one this is red and around this one is the blue it exactly in the covers the entire you know uh, visible spectrum so entire visible spectrum means you know around 400 nanometers is blue around 700 nanometers is red but this one that we, we are seeing this line this is there is no in a wavelength here this is basically a connecting point you know between this blue area and between this red area this is we say this is around this red area this line we say pink line okay now see uh if you just you know go further uh, let's so we we move uh, on the on the on the video so this is that one so Now you see the point is moving right so point is moving and the color is changing means this as it goes from the you know this lower point you know for for example this lower area from this point as you move along this line it is basically following the you know monochromatic light or single wavelength light and the color is changing you see green is still greenish and then you know converting to cyan and then move to blue right now see that let's say we just you know um, draw a line on this diagram and any any line you can draw but here you know it draws this uh, this line right now if you just draw let's say at this point is cyan and at this point is some sort of this pink now if you draw this line you know that if you mix up this color that we are we are seeing this cyan and this pink if you mix up these colors that what are the possible colors that you can generate a very interesting you know, thing is the colors that resides on this line that's the possible color that we can generate by mixing you know this cyan and this pink color at a different if you if you change the proportion then you can come up with the colors on this line okay 
so that it shows you see that if you if you mix up you know maybe if you take more cyan you know like this and if you take if it if you just reduce the cyan portion if you increase this portion then how this color changing this shows the direction okay you see the similarly if you just you know uh, mix up with this color with this you know color so then what are the different colors you can produce the different color that you can produce basically you know lies on this line so that's very interesting the all the possible colors that you can generate you know the the color that the moving that's the possible colors the set of colors that you can generate another any line so let's let's we think about it. another line that's coming up with right so in this way you just go any line you can produce how about this one? this is very interesting you see that this is saying that let's say if you mix up this green and this blue at at certain proportion that it's indicated by this point you can you know come up with this light right then you come up you can generate this color the same color you can generate if you just mix up this color and this color with that proportion then you can come up with this light the same color you can generate by mixing you know, this point in this point so that means what any two points on this entire diagram you can you know connect and then you can come up with all the possible colors that reside on that line so that this is what this says okay so uh, now uh, let's you know forward okay well now you see the idea that connecting two points can be extended to a connecting three points for example just take any three points on this space for example you know this point and this point and this point then what are the possible colors that we can generate the possible colors that we can generate basically all the colors that you know become inside of this triangle that means you just you know plot the triangle you see and then you basically can generate all the colors you see we can generate all of these colors just by mixing the right amount of this color this colors and this color so that means what you know this is the all the possible colors basically this you know outer you know the, the, this chromaticity diagram that we we can you know represented by the any the values of x and y any points inside this one that we can generate x and y basically that's the theoretical color possible now in practice what we can do is basically we select any three points and then we just you know uh, depending on our device cost depending on our application depending on certain you know systems configuration you know we just you know based on our design we just select any three points and then we you know set a triangle and then we can say this is our color space you know or this is that coming from this chromaticity diagram okay so anyway so you just you know mix up you know this color this color and this color then all the colors that you possible color that you can generate that reside within this one okay so that what it says now see so any color is possible see so that means what you know for your monitor for your printer or whatever you say you basically need you know you basically need to select three points so generally what uh, we do you know we select one point around you know from this red zone maybe from maybe around this zone and one point we select around the green zone and another point we select around the blue zone and then you just you know draw this you know triangle so that's your color gamut we say color gamut okay now this color gamut might be different from one device to another so you can you know watch you know more in this video uh, from your own but i'm now moving forward okay so we now come here right so we understand that this is in the chromaticity diagram that we had this is the the theoretical chromaticity diagram 
but then you know depending on our cho chosen colors for example this one this one this one so this is you know something for example you know the cie standard body when they came up with the rgb primary colors they basically choose you know the green points from this point and the blue point exactly this one and the red point exactly this one so this was the you know color gamut the first rgb you know color gamut that we had so and now can you can you see that what is the what is this point so this point basically indicated some you know the x and this is the y value and what is this point so this point you know that i'm talking about this point so this definitely has an this can be represented by this x values for example 0 0.2 something and these y values maybe 0 0.7 something and how about these values this basically you know x is 0 y is also 0 so this is the 0 0 point okay so uh, this is how with this but then we also need to choose another point that is called white point see definitely we understand that you know that inside this color gamma you know definitely because you know if we choose one point around the red another point around green another point around the blue so white will be somewhere here right but we don't know exactly what point we mean by white now it's again depending on your design for example you know you can someone can choose okay this is the white point so this is the white point means you know x equals somehow maybe 0 0.3 something and this y is somehow maybe you know 0 0.3 something so that's the you know the x y values right so by this way you are basically coming up with you just represent x and y right so this is called chromaticity diagram and 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 this y is the same so 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 now what we can say that you know to represent that that this is our entire you know possible theoretical you know uh, chromaticity diagram or color space or we say x y y color space now which color gamma we are using for our particular interest and application so for example this is this triangle is a color gamma we say okay and to represent this color gamma we need you know three pairs of x point maybe we say you know one these points maybe we can say x r y r point and uh, these points you know we can say x z y z point and we also need to mention you know x b and y b point so this point roughly represent your red point this is green point and this is blue point and also we need to mention that what is our white point information so that is x w and y w so if you have this information so that means you can exactly pinpoint that which color gamma do we mean and which white point do we mean okay now you know this is you know one okay uh, let's we move to the next part that we will start from here